Policy Matters is a conversation platform which aims to provide reasoned analysis and context to the activities, reforms, and policies of the federal government of Ethiopia. Exploring various reforms the government is undertaking, the conversation platform aspires to enable nuanced and informed understanding. Your Excellency, Wezerudag Mait Mogas, Minister of Ministry of Transport, welcome to uh, the discussion of policy matters, which we are going to dwell on national transport and logistics uh, policies. Thank you for having me. Uh, Your Excellency, would you please uh, tell us major in legal and institutional reforms that your ministry has taken, uh, taken in the last two years? And what are the major uh, improvements in terms of infrastructure as well as service provision? Uh, during the past two years, uh, one of the priorities that uh, my ministry was uh, giving is uh, working on the policy aspects. And uh, the first uh, big step that we call is uh, the ratification of the national uh, transport policy, which is uh, the first policy of our country. And this new policy come up with new uh, ideas and with new different modes of transport, like that of the cable car, the pipeline transport. And uh, it also uh, provide a clear guideline on how we're going to enhance the existing uh, transport system that we have in our country, including the inland water transport system, which we aspire to enhance its implementation in our 10 year perspective plan and in, in six major places, including uh, our uh, Great Renaissance Town. Wow, interesting. We are aware that uh, there are a series of uh, transformational interventions in the logistics uh, uh, sector. Mm. And uh, what, how would you measure your success uh, in the, for the intervention? Yes, uh, following the ratification of uh, the national transport policy, uh, the second sub-policy that we uh, ratified, or the first sub-policy from the transport policy that we ratified is the logistics policy of our country. And we have also uh, the uh, logistics strategy, which is or which was ratified during the past two years. And the strategy has uh, six major pillars and has 98 interventions that we need to do to be able to transform the logistics sector. And I can say that the establishment of the National Logistics Council, as per the direction indicated in the uh, logistics policy, is one of the major uh, big steps that we have taken as a government. Because logistics is all about everything. Logistics is all about the basic necessities that we use as a citizen as well. And our country, uh, as per uh, the evaluation that has been done by the World Bank in 2016, Ethiopia ranked 106 out of 160 countries, which shows how the logistics performance in our country is not as per the expectation and as it deserves to be. And the logistics sub-policy and the logistics strategy along with the establishment of the council, is expected to change this phase of our country by transforming us from the state of being 126 to that of the state of being 40s in LPI in the coming 10 years. And the council has an advisory team also, which is already on board, which we call the uh, logistics transformation office and it has also its own working group which is already established as per uh, the policy guideline and I can say that all the groundwork is being done and we expect to see the results in the coming years and we have made the base very uh, clear now. Interesting. Does your plan include uh, uh, IT solutions? Because from a number of uh, conferences that uh, you have attended and from webinars, we gather that you are really passionate in innovative logistics and transport solutions. So would uh, this include logistics solutions and how easy it is going to be? What are the opportunities, the challenges in 
implementing these innovative solutions? Yes, I'm very much passionate about that because when we think of logistics transformation, without the implementation of IT solution, without the engagement of technology, we can make it, we cannot make it happen. Because transport is one of the sectors which is very close for innovative solutions. But as a country, the whole system that we used to have has been rigid, but it has to be as flexible as possible to address the needs of our people. And engagement of technology and innovative solution for the whole logistic system transformation is not an option. And it's very mandatory. And as a ministry, we are working aggressively to make that happen. I'm glad that uh, you're aware that we cannot go without uh, IT solution to transform logistics. Exactly. Yeah, that's really, sounds really great. Thank you. Uh, your ministry also introduced uh, uh, a, cy a cycling and a walking day once in a month. Mm. And what's uh, your goal, major goal with that? And what have you achieved so far in that aspect? Uh, the transport policy that we have, as the topic of our discussion is policy matters, and it really does, because it affects the lives of each and every citizen. The policy guideline that we design as a government is going to affect, in one way or another, the people that we serve. That's why we need to be very careful whenever we design our policies. And I believe we tried to do that in my ministry. And the transport policy clearly indicates the kind of priority that we need to give to our people. And if we have to give priority to our people, we need to have a national non-motorized transport strategy, which is the one that we ratified during the COVID pandemic. And it is one of the major uh, breakthroughs that we could, that we attained uh, in the past two years as well. Because the, natura, the national uh, non-motorized transport strategy clearly gives priority for the pedestrian and for the people. Previously, we used to construct even roads for vehicles. We were not constructing roads for people. But now we want to reverse that and have an inverted kind of permit where we give much emphasis for the pedestrian and for the people. And to be able to do that, making and creating awareness for the public in a form of uh, the motto that we use as a ministry, which means we'll get there, is something that we use to encourage walking and cycling. By doing so, we believe that even we can reduce the road fatality that we face in our country which is among one of the major challenges that we have as a government. I'm really glad that uh, is your priority. But uh, saying this, uh, our pedestrian roads are used not only for walking, but as a shop, as a restaurants, etc. So how are you going to, uh, you know, this is not under your administration, I understand, mm -hmm. but how are you going to make it happen that ped pedestrian roads are pedestrians and would not be the cause for accidents because as you know, Ethiopia is one, uh, Ethiopian accident rate is one of the highest. Mm. So in terms of also prevention, this contributes, by the way, what is also at the same time your plan to uh, uh, minimize the accident rates in Ethiopia and what are your targets? Uh, very good. As you mentioned it uh, rightly, uh, the issue of pedestrian, uh, the kind of uh, roads that we have for pedestrians, uh, it's not enough in the first place. Even those pedestrian roads that we have, they are being used by different activities like street vendors and others. The NMT, the Non-Motorized Transport Strategy, clearly indicates with which uh, ministry or with which uh, authority at regional, at regional level that we need to work to avoid those challenges. And in the NMT strategy, it gives direction for the establishment of a steering committee, which we already did. And at regional government and city government level, we need to have 
a replica of that string committee that we have at federal government, where uh, different uh, responsible bureaus like trade and others are also part and parcel of that string committee. So even the traffic police and different law enforcement institutions are also part and parcel of the steering committee. So it's not something that we do alone as a transport minister. Rather, it is something that we do along with other uh, responsible government authorities to be able to address the challenge in this aspect. By doing so, we believe that the road that has been constructed for pedestrians will serve only pedestrians. But we also understand that we need to have so many pedestrian roads because we did not give them priority earlier, but now we have a clear policy and a strategy that gives direction for the prioritization of these aspects that I mentioned to be able to correct uh, the limitations that we had earlier. And at the same time, the, the issue of fatality because of road accident that you mentioned is one of uh, the major challenges that we have as a government. Because as a developing country, among the factors of production that we have to develop, the major one is labor. And we are losing the youth because of this traffic accident. Unless and otherwise, we save the youth, our future for the country, the future of uh, our country, we are not able to make the kind of uh, results that we aspire to see in different development aspects. And where we, are we now in terms of uh, accident level and where do you want to go in the next five years or 10 years? Do you have a target? Of course. Uh, actually, the traffic accident used to uh, increase at an increasing rate during the past years. Mm -hmm. But we are seeing a slight trend of declining during the past two years. Mm -hmm. And currently, the rate of accident is 34 per 10,000 vehicle. And in the coming 10 years, we aspire to reduce that figure to 10 per 10,000 vehicle. And uh, with the support of all the people that we have in our country and with the engagement of responsible government authorities, we believe that we're going to make that happen because we hope we can do it together. People's yes. matter. You're right. And we are here for the citizen as a government and we are responsible to keep their life. That's really right. Yeah, I'm glad that uh, that's also a priority of the ministry and uh, we'll do it together. Yeah, it's a Thank you. public responsibility as well. Uh, we know that uh, you have completed the, your 10 years perspective plan. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your departures and new insights uh, in the incorporated in your new plans? Uh, yes, we uh, finalized our 10 years perspective plan. Uh, the major shift that we want to uh, realize, for instance, in the infrastructure development aspect, uh, creating access should not be the only priority that we need to give. But equally, the issue of quality has to be addressed. So uh, we have a departure to give priority for quality infrastructure development, along with the accessibility issue, which is the component of one of the SDGs, obviously. And also we try to inculcate different kinds of international standards that has been set for the construction of uh, roads, railway lines, and different uh, infrastructures for the inland water, uh, inland water development and also uh, the aviation sector. What do you expect from the private sectors in this regard and how are you going to incorporate the private sectors as well? Uh, we, uh, the private sector priority and the priority that we have given for the engagement of the private sector is one of the major departures even that we have in our 10-year perspective plan. For instance, uh, why am I saying this is the 10-year perspective plan in the transport sector alone, it requires about three uh, trillion per investment for the realization of uh, the targets wow. that we set. 
So this is not something that can be done by the government alone. Mm -hmm. Unless and otherwise, the private sector comes and engage. Unless and otherwise, the private sector make a joint venture with a foreign investor. Unless and otherwise, we engage the foreign investors to come and invest in the transport infrastructure development as well as service provision, we are not going to attain our target. So the major departure of our plan is the engagement of the private sector, which we are very much determined to do so. Even uh, the introduction of different information communication technology solutions, which is going to help us to make the service to be more accessible to the public mm -hmm. by providing them the service where they are, rather than making them to come and get the service is one of the departures that we want to attend. Is PPE one of the considerations in the private sector engagement? Of uh, course. For both local and international? Of course. That's we nice. have identified different projects, mm -hmm. even at the initial stage. Currently, we have about uh, 20 projects that we identified, but we will identify more in the coming years. In just six months, uh, we already identified about 20, and recently we will have different platforms where we will be able to introduce those projects that could be picked to be done in a form of PPP with the private sector, be it in our country and also for the foreign investors, and we'll uh, have platforms in the near future. Okay, that sounds uh, really great. Um, you know, the transport sector in, is one of the vital sector in social development and economic uh, growth uh, mm -hmm. development of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. How prepared are you to support the growing economy of Ethiopia? And mm -hmm. what do you need, um, what kind of platform do you need to uh, serve the, the growing demand of uh, the transport sector? Uh, the transport sector is enabler. And because of this nature of the sector, we did not plan alone. We planned it with different ministries, with Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Trade, Ministry of Mines, and Ministry of Culture and Tourism, and Ministry of Urban Development and Construction. Because when we think of urban centers, nearly 30 to 40% is all about mobility. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to be mobility, our ministry, both in the infrastructure development and service provision needs to plan. And that is what we try to do in the uh, plan preparation phase. So uh, we are going to support the whole economy in the whole logistic system provision in those major identified areas by our government that we do in the coming 10 years. So uh, it is designed in that way. Interesting. Um, your ministry is leading about 10 major uh, institutions in road infrastructure, maritime, aviation, transport, multiple sectors really under, uh, they are accountable to you. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, incorporate and integrate and lead them? Meanwhile, the logistics sector itself uh, requires uh, a lot of synergy among different stakeholders. So what is your mechanism to bring this, the, the, all the stakeholders together? Uh, to start with the coordinations that we have within, uh, we are preparing a 30-year uh, transport master plan, which we expect to change or which we expect to finalize in the coming few months. And the master plan is going to be the one that's going to help us to integrate our actions in all modes of transport, railway, aviation, uh, road transport, road infrastructure development. Even uh, we made different kinds of uh, engagements across the sea. And we have ships as a government and we lease ships as a government because the uh, we are serving 100 million people. And the volume of import and export is significantly increasing from time to time. Even this year, uh, we have uh, a plan and we're prepared to uh, make an import and export of nearly 17 million metric ton Ooh. of product, which is a huge number. Uh, to be able to create coordination among different stakeholders in our 
ministry. Yes, it's a huge ministry currently at the federal uh, government level within the ministry and accountable institutions. We have more than 15,000 employees. Uh, we need to uh, make them to come on board. And the master plan is helping us uh, to coordinate within. And the 10 year uh, perspective plan preparation is also helping us to coordinate among ourselves. But the coordination that we do within is not going to be sufficient because when we think of uh, logistics, it requires synergy, as you perfectly mentioned it. And to be able to bring those, those uh, synergies that we need in the sector, uh, we try to uh, bring all the relevant ministries in a form of uh, logistics council to come uh, across the board and come and plan, execute, evaluate, and do the whole system and the whole uh, business together. By doing so, we have a plan to make our country a logistics hub, not only for the 100 million people that we have, but also for the neighboring countries that are also land-linked, just like that of ours. We can take the example of South Sudan, we can take the example of Chad, even to the extent of Congo DRC. If we have a logistics system which is more efficient, we can be a hub for uh, the neighboring African countries as well, where we can have uh, and get advantage of creating employment opportunities, enhancing services, and others. Very interesting. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward uh, for the transform, transportation and logistics uh, okay. services. Uh, I have one more question, which is very important uh, uh, because it touches the wider public. Your ministry is serving uh, the service providers and the public themselves the, directly to the public because you provide transport service and they are highly um, sensitive. How do you get a feedback on the service provision, both from service providers and the wider public as well? Uh, during the past two years, uh, we were able to uh, formulate different kinds of uh, organizations uh, with the private sector, with the Ethiopian uh, diaspora uh, living around the world, and with different uh, supporters from international community. And to mention the first one, uh, the first one is the, uh, the council, the, the transport sector council composed of the private sector. And this council has about 69 members. And each member represents about 100, maybe 1,000, maybe even some of them, they represent millions behind them as they are institutions coming, representing the, to make sure that the interests of their uh, members are being properly served by our ministry. And this council has nine executive committee members and they have their own office. They already developed uh, a website which is open for every citizen and anyone who is not served properly by the ministry and accountable institution can directly complain to this council which we are responsible to report to and they come up with evidence and documents and sometimes they challenge us and as a government we are at the responsible uh, position to be asked and we are ready to be asked every time and whenever we make a mistake and if there is an employee committing uh, something wrong we need to adjust and amend as per the expectation of our people and uh, the website is open and they are uh, helping us in that aspect uh, so you are telling me that if i have any complaint on the service uh, minister of transport service i go and report immediately to the council on yes, the website. on the website. You don't need to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, their address is uh, being communicated even sometimes through uh, text messages. We are trying to help them to promote it more so that everybody uh, may know where to go if proper service is not being provided. So we'll work with them. And we also have international advisory team, transport international advisory team composed of uh, 
diasporas living abroad, mm -hmm. working in different international organizations with different knowledge and experts. So we have a platform as well. They give us uh, the experiences. They give us what's being done in those developed countries. They share their knowledge and they work with us. We have also a transport working group that we do with those uh, donor uh, and supporting uh, government um, international agencies. With all of them, we have regular uh, evaluation platform. We do it every quarter and we report to them. They challenge us and we give them feedback. And even sometimes uh, we may challenge them back. I because love the transparency. I, this has to be encouraged. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the wonderful discussion that uh, you gave us. And uh, we hope and looking forward for more transformed uh, transport and logistics uh, provision in Ethiopia. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.